Welcome, folks, to a brand new episode of the world's most interactive podcast, the best music journal that exists in the world right now. Smoke them if you got them. And, and today we have a special scenario for you folks. Today we're fulfilling a request from Idam Mateen, who sent uh, an email, a comment on YouTube asking for the Oracle of Oxford County and myself to uh, review Octopus by the English pop rock band Gentle Giant. And uh, I jumped at the chance, and uh, Jeremiah has most of the great records they've made, original pressings and vinyl at home. So, so here we are, and that's what we're going to do today. Now, premise of the show is simple. You know what you've got to do, but uh, let's get some encouraging words for you fine folks from the Oracle of Oxford County, Mr. Ladies, Jeremiah Charlton. Ladies and gentlemen, put down your phones. Stop looking at hoes on Instagram. That ain't good for you. You're going to... Well, that's good, but just just take a break. That's all I'm saying. I'm not even judging you. I'm just saying to take a break. That's right. I mean, can we just we all need a break from the puzzles and bustles of everyday life? Every once in a while. I'm saying we've been locked in quarantine. Maybe maybe you're with your, your significant other, and you just want to you know listen to some prog. And guess what? She doesn't like prog. You want to know why? Because she's a woman. Yeah, yeah. And um, the fact. Right, right. And so you just put the headphones on, and let's listen to uh, Gentle Giant Octopus. Let's do that. Let's do it, guys. Please take it away. Please take it away. Well, Gentle Giant, to me, in this record, adds an elephant, uh, an elephant, an elephant of funk. Yeah. Because that's really what is going on. There's an element of funk. In the drummer's backbeat at times. Yeah. Do you agree? Especially on the first. Yeah. We, after we both uh, were re listening, uh, you know, in preparation to, to for, the, for the show today, uh, we were we were both noting that, uh, yo, this is funky as hell. John Weathers is a drummer on, on for Gentle Giant in this, uh, this recording. And uh, all over it, right? All over it. John Weathers brought the funk. Yeah, I like the first track, the advent of Panurge, and of course, I like a cry for everyone. First, on this side, on this like side, uh, yeah, on this side, uh, Rock and Tour, Troubadour, and Knots were my favorite. So, you like one and three? I like two and four. Yep. The, all these tracks, by the way, folks, four minutes, four forty-one, perfect pop songs. Um, I, I want to give it a little context because. Uh, you know, the cool thing about this album is this album came onto the charts, like mainstream popular charts, twice over. When it first came out, um, it hit a modest 170 on the Billboard, uh, Billboard Top 200, 73. And then when it was re released in 2015, uh, after getting mixed uh, and remastered, it, it debuted at 34. So. It says a lot about this band. A lot of people agree, and, and I'm going to ask you about this. Do you think this is one of their finest works? Yeah, I like I like their live album, but for a studio album, yes. Yeah, I think it brings it brings a lot of uh, a lot of death, and you know, for how short the songs are, uh, they're just packed full of everything and everywhere you can go. I mean. For me, for me, the the thing that really impressed me the most was the quality of the sound. I, I didn't hear the re release; I heard the you know the regular one, and just the quality of the sound and the songwriting is so damn cool. Did you enjoy the harmonies? Well, see, the thing about vocals is we we haven't really covered many bands that have vocals, and definitely not to this extent, right? Yeah. And, uh to me, it reminds me of, uh, and the time period too, like 72, it, it sounds like Trespass, Genesis. Yeah, it has a lot of Genesis, it has, it has a lot of Yes. Right, um, so yeah. it has a lot of its own things too. But that would be like, what reminds me vocally and, and Gabriel at the time, right? Yeah. Uh, I also like the Power and Glory nice. album. Nice. Yeah. I like that one. Um, Power and Glory is, uh, is it before... Or after this? It's like two after, 74. There you go. And these guys were consistent, too. The thing about Gentle Giant is, you know, it was album out every year. 
because in 72, they did three friends. In 72, they had Octopus. And in 73, they had In a Glass House. Um, it's a band that really hasn't stopped. How many records do you, how many Gentle Giant records do you own? Um, I got the first one, Gentle, the self-titled Gentle Giant. Yeah. Uh, I have. That was my introduction to them, their first one. I have three friends. I have, I'm missing, uh, I have Octopus. Mm -hmm. I have The Power and the Glory. I have Freehand. I have Interview. I have The Missing Piece. I have Playing the Fool. Um, It's a lot of stuff. Yeah, I think I even have Giant for a Day. How how easy was it? How easy was it to find these uh, releases out used? To me, not that hard. Because I mean, like, I was gonna say actually, this one of um, now original copy of this is expensive. It's still like probably close to 150 bucks US. Yeah, but there's 86 different pressings of this. So it's crazy about that about this band, right? Like, this is a band that was active for about 10 years, 1970 to 1980, and they were on every major. A label. They were on Chrysalis, they were on Vertigo, they were on Columbia, they were on Capitol, they were on every major label. And every time a label would get them, they would reprint the catalog because the music that they had created in those 10 years was just out of control. So I think it's time to listen to the second uh, side, correct? Yeah, yeah. We're listening to Octopus by Gentle Giant, 1972. And, uh, you know what well, the drill is. You got to light up the other one because we're about to flip this bitch over and enjoy four more tracks that are just going to blow you away. So smoke them if you got them. Let's do it. <laughs> that was a good. Uh, that was a good didgeridoo. Well, I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm a great didgeridoo player, so it makes sense. I, I don't doubt it, but uh, we're not talking about you didgeridoo playing today. We're talking about Gentle Giant's Octopus, the B-side to this uh, to this crazy awesome record that was uh, requested by, by a loyal listener, and, and here we're doing it for him. Um, a curious point about this album, it's called Octopus because uh, the wife of uh, one of the two writers... I don't know their names on the top of my head, but, uh, you know, he, she kept trying to call this concept album, you know, it was, a, it was a beast with eight parts out, you know, so octopi, octopi, and it became octopus. This was intended to be like Gentle Giant's version of, uh, the, of a rock opera, you know, and uh, I think it did a really good job with like doing that fusion of folk and soul and jazz and, you know, very modern sounding music but with a classic backdrop of rock and roll. Um, did you like this side better than the A side? Mm, no, but I liked like Boys in the Band, and I liked uh, River. Boys in the Band, loved it. Uh, Think of Me with Kindness really got me. Um, it, it's, it's a great... It's a really great song written by Carrie uh, Minier. I'm sure I'm, I'm, cl- I'm killing the last name, but he's the he's the keys uh, player on on the on Gentle Giant, you know, piano, Hammond, Mini Moog, Mellotron, the whole deal. Um, yeah, Think of Me with Kindness killed me, but the boys in the band, man, what a fun track, right? It gives you yeah. a vibe. You're, you're in the studio. You're with them. Oh, it's great. Yeah, it's great. What do you think about the uh, – talk to me a little bit about the guitar work of Gentle Giant. Gary Green. Yeah. Gary Green's on the, on the, on the scene. Yeah. Um, and he's very mean. Hey. Gary Green, uh, very talented. Um, underrated, I would say, mm. um, by others. You know, like, rarely have I heard him placed upon, like – favorite prog rock guitar players but to me he was like great he was he was never really boring and he never like he knew his place to me he didn't like play too much uh whenever it was time for solo it was good his parts were incredible uh live he's real impressive because again it's like one thing to play these parts folks in the studio but live prog rock is the real deal so and the live album that you're referencing is the Playing the Fool, the official live? Yeah, I think so. I got to look at my albums right now. It's a double live, whatever that one is. Yeah, it's a, that's a live album. Um, and uh, 
let's see. Gary Green is uh, the electric uh, on this on this recording, electric and acoustic. It was released in seventy seven. Um, it's a four sided number, and it's got just the same on reflection excerpts from Octopus, uh, Funny Ways, The Runaway, So Sincere, Free Hands, Three Georgia Brown, and Peel the Paint. Yeah, yeah, it's um, awesome. It has also a 35th anniversary re-release edition. Now, we usually we don't cover bands that uh, have been in the Billboard 200 and that are this accessible, but but this is a cool band that we both uh, have enjoyed at many times before. I, I ran into Gentle Giant when I was did my first run through Frank Zappa. Gentle Giant uh, was a was a band that I was very comfortable with, and uh, Gentle Giant and Camel. Uh, gave me a different flavor as well you know so when when was the first time you heard gentle giant mm, had to be the first album that album cover yeah i think i think i just saw the album cover to tell you the truth i think i, I did like a like i was in starting to get into prog and i had heard the name of the band yeah. but i think i was like a, just a blind buy to tell you the truth yeah, um, you know, for for those that, that don't know, the cover of the first album it looks like a like like a friar abbey dwarf, uh, hyper realistically like drawn on top of that record. I mean, it's it's kind of eerie, right? Demented. <laughs> yeah, it's eerie, demented, and demented. tweaked right out. It, it's kind of looking at you, but not looking at you. It's it's yeah, it's it's gnarly. That was the first one that. Uh, that was the first one that I caught on. And uh, by the way, you know, this is a cool note for that first album. Mad Villain um, hip hop group samples uh, Gentle Giant uh, Funny Ways. Uh, on, it, was, it was sampled for the soundtrack to the Boondocks cartoon show. Yeah. So, you know, because when you know, you just know, you know, you just. Now, what's interesting to me about this album. Uh, it's it's like a little bit of everything, right? Like the, mm-hmm. the, uh, a true fusion album, really. Yeah. Like people think of fusion of like jazz, obviously, but to me, this is a fusion album because it has a little bit of everything. I mean, they got that medieval thing at times. There's obviously that the funk. There's the rock aspect. Yeah, they got some. They got the they got soul. They got jazz. They got right. this romantic. A little, vibe. little bit of everything they, they really going in and out. All. What's impressive, though, is that they do these eight tunes, uh, all of them under uh, four and a half minutes. Um, yeah, or true. five minutes. And uh, so the fact that they run through so uh, it's fine, it's, it's, it's fine, it's gel, you know, it's smooth. And it's usually when you have these short songs and you're trying to fusion through things, there's abrupt cuts and, and lots of starts and stops. That's not the case with Gentle Giant. It's more of a journey. And uh, and you get to hear it all. I thoroughly enjoy this album. I know uh, Jeremiah's a big fan of this band, and uh, so you know, thumbs up from over here. Not that our opinion matters that much. We're just trying to make you a better human. If you hadn't heard Gentle Giant, this is a good record to own. Correct. Good. Good yeah. overall. And again, it's quick too. It's like what thirty five minutes. It's not a big deal. It's another. It's another quick. We we keep running into these uh, shorter albums that are just absolutely all killer, and no filler. And uh, yeah, this is a great album. Uh, if you if you can't find this one, try to go for that live one, uh, playing the fool. Um, what, what, do you have another suggestion for them, Jeremiah? Uh, f- oh, the power and the glory. That's a good one too. There you go. Give you three good ones uh, for today's and the first uh, episode. One, right, first one we yeah. talked about. First one, you got to cool. try to get that first one because that first one's real, real cool. And you know, I the music does evolve, but it always is Gentle Giant. Yes, which is uh, which is cool for bands that you know did come into some money because they were they, these guys were always signed. These guys always had big gigs. These guys were always, uh, you know, obviously making studio records and making them well so this is uh this is a nice uh breath of fresh air for, Bef- for a more well-known Bef- band. before we go where do you want to uh journey to tomorrow what's your pick let's go for uh let's, let's go back to the uk all right we'll stay there let's go back to the uk and uh and have a good time because you know this is where good shit's uh coming out of even though italy treated me so good you know all right, so folks, uh, tomorrow we'll go to a British band 
and it will not sound like Gentle Giant. That's all I'll tell you. I love that shit. That's what we do in Smoke Him If You Got Him. Let's do it. Smoke If You Got Him tomorrow, boys.